Hello there, it's Dr. Meyer here. In this video, I'm going to teach you about first species counterpoint and the harmony and voice leading rules and guidelines that composers follow in order to write first species counterpoint. What is first species counterpoint? In first species, the lines of melodies move at the same rate, one to one or note against note, like in the example below. In the next few minutes, you will learn some rules and guidelines of harmony, which is how the voices sound together, and of the voice leading, which is how the voices are led from point to point. When we discuss harmony, we are talking about pitches sounding simultaneously. I talked briefly about harmonic intervals in the video on intervals. All counterpoint, especially first species, relies on particular harmonic intervals between simultaneous sounding notes. The most important rule of harmony in first species is that only consonances are allowed. Intervals considered consonant are thirds, fifths, sixths, and octaves or unisons. This means that no seconds, fourths, or sevenths will be found in first species counterpoint. And also, no augmented or diminished intervals. Thinking back to the video on intervals, you may remember that I told you that fifths and octaves are considered perfect quality intervals. The same is true in counterpoint. The other consonances are called imperfect consonances, and they are major thirds and sixths and minor thirds and sixths. Now it's your turn to practice. After listening to the excerpt, identify the harmonic intervals between the upper and lower voices. Pause the video if you need more time. We usually write the label for harmonic intervals in between the staves. Here are the intervals you should have come up with. You could have said minor tenth or minor third for the second and third measures. Both are acceptable. Identifying the intervals used in your counterpoint is important to ensuring that you've used the correct consonances. After you've used the correct consonances, you need to write them consecutively with the proper voice leading technique. There are four types of relative motion, or how the voices move in relation to one another, that can be found in counterpoint. The first is parallel motion. Parallel motion occurs when both voices move by the same interval. You can observe parallel motion here in our example when C and E move up to D and F. Both C and E move up a step on the staff and move in parallel motion. Parallel motion can be both ascending and descending. The second type of motion is similar motion. Similar motion occurs when both voices move in the same direction. In our example, the voices do not move by the same interval, but do move in the same direction. Similar motion can occur both ascending and descending as well. The third type of relative motion is called oblique motion. Oblique motion occurs when one voice moves and the other stays stationary. In our example here, the lower voice remains on C and the upper voice ascends. Oblique motion can occur in any combination of one voice moving either up or down and the other remaining the same. The last type of relative motion is contrary motion. Contrary motion occurs when the voices move in different directions. In our example here, the voices are moving away from one another, but contrary motion can also be when the voices are moving toward one another. Now that you know the relative motions between two intervals, we can talk about a few more important voice leading rules. You will discuss a full list of rules and guidelines in class. The first important voice leading rule is that perfect intervals that means fifths and octaves, may not be left or approached by parallel motion. Observe the two examples below. We have two consecutive perfect fifths and two consecutive perfect octaves moving upward in parallel motion. 
This is a voice leading error and is not permitted in first species counterpoint. You may see an error correction marking like these above the staff to indicate that you've written parallel perfect intervals. The next rule also pertains to fifths and octaves. It states that perfect fifths and octaves may not be approached by similar motion unless the upper voice moves by a step. If the upper voice leaps, the perfect octave or perfect fifths kind of sticks out and sounds rather jarring. In our example below, we have two sixths moving to two fifths and a major tenth and a minor sixth moving to perfect octaves. In these two examples, the upper voice is leaping toward the fifth and octave respectively. This is a voice leading error called direct fifth or direct octave. You may see an error correction mark like these above the staff to indicate that you've written a direct fifth or direct octave. The other two examples lead the upper voice by step to the fifth and the octave with proper voice leading technique. Now it's your turn to practice error detection in first species counterpoint. Look at the upper voice for any flowing line errors, check the harmonic intervals, and check the voice leading in between the intervals. Here's what the exercise sounds like. Pause the video and take all the time you need to find these errors. There are six errors. Starting with the upper line errors, here is written an unprepared and unresolved double leap. Another error in this line is an interval of an augmented fourth from E flat to A natural. Here are the harmonic intervals you should have discovered. Notice anything unusual here? Yeah, that perfect fourth is not a consonance we can use in first species counterpoint and is an error. What about voice leading errors? There is a direct fifth in the second and third measures because the upper voice leaps up to F, creating a direct fifth. Finally, we have two sets of parallel octaves happening here. You should train your ear to hear these errors and it will make it easier for you to write flawless first species counterpoint. Listen again knowing about all of these errors. Rely on your ear to help you zero in on those harmony and voice leading errors. We learned a lot in this video. Here are the take home messages. In first species counterpoint, lines move at the same rate, or note against note. Harmony in first species includes only consonances of thirds, fifths, sixths, and octaves. Voices can move in four different relative motion types, being parallel, similar, oblique, and contrary motion types. And we covered a few of the rules and guidelines that pertain to voice leading. These rules and guidelines are important to follow for both individual lines and for harmonic interval writing. You will delve deeper into these rules and guidelines in your Species Counterpoint Handbook. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.